How are you doing? I'm I can good. see How you. Are you? <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. 12 hours today, 12 hours is going to be pretty <laughs> epic. Uh, yeah. it's, <laughs> we had some glitches earlier. So if just in case, you know, one of us goes off, uh, just yeah. continue, just continue. Um, okay. so Jim's non-duality meanings share a mystery, a paradox. This paradox is that this appearance isn't what it ap appears to be. It is, mm -hmm. and it isn't. It's no thing being something. It's emptiness appearing as everything. It's unified appearing as divided or separated. When I was a desperate, desperate explorer of this, I used to watch Jim on YouTube. And uh, sometimes I, would, I just saw my notes, actually. I would record the time that I paused it so that I could replay it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't miss anything. I know. I'm like, what did I, maybe that, that second that I missed, I would rewind it and go back over and over and over again. Uh, and then one day I was just like laughing and laughing and laughing because it's just, mm. this, it's just hilarious. So thank you so much for yeah. doing this. Jim uh, just released the, my favorite part of, of these meetings are the introductions, mm -hmm. the 10 minute introductions that, that he does. I think it should be done in a book. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot here. Oh, great. Yeah. You're welcome, Rita. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Rita. <laughs> Hello. Hi. How are you? So we're going to get started. I'm going to mute myself. And thank you again, Jim, for doing oh, this. Thank you. Thanks. This is great. Oh, you mean I should give an introduction? <laughs> yes. Yeah? All right. Well, I mean, I can start off with, I can just connect to what you said. Um, that you would pause it, the, the recordings, so that you wouldn't miss anything, so you wouldn't miss it, because it might be exactly there where you weren't listening. And that is exactly, that, that, is, that is the whole story of the individual. That is the whole story of separation, that there's something hidden that needs to be found, and it's up to that experience of separation to find it. The experience of separation is really just the experience I am. I know. Begins just by knowing I'm here, by knowing what this is. And the experience is that knowing is comforting. Knowing is security. Knowing is control. So the energy of the individual, the energy of seeking is to know more, to have enough experiences, to have enough knowing, to make itself feel like there's enough, to make itself feel like this is complete, it's done, it's over. Knowing, however, although it gives the experience, the original initial experience of having something, knowing in the end is also the need to know. So as long as there is this solid experience of I know, there will be a need to experience, a need to know more. It never ends. There's always something else. There's always something more that needs to happen. That's the hopelessness of the individual experience. That need to know is an experience in the appearance, what's happening, this, being solid. So it's in relationship to me. It's happening to me. It's real. It's real and, and solid. And that experience of this separation, of this being real and solid, makes it appear as it's not. So this appearance is not real. It's not solid. There is, in essence, no real perspective. There is no real point. There could be, or you could say, that this is every perspective or any perspective that what's happening is anything happening or everything happening. The experience of the individual is that there's something happening real to me. There's something fixed. And what's longed for is what's unfixed. What's longed for is the unconditional freedom of neither knowing nor not knowing. The unconditional freedom of this not needing to be even what it is. 
So the message is really a response to what you said in the beginning about not wanting to miss something. And it doesn't have any answers to that need of seeking. It doesn't actually offer anything to it. What it does is it responds to that need of something needing to happen, that need of knowing more by pointing out that nothing is needed. Need is an illusion and nothing needs to happen for this to be the unrecognizable freedom that it is already. The experience of the individual is that to find this, to find what we're talking about, there has to be a certain process. There has to be a movement. The past has to be worked out. Realizations have to happen or knowing needs to fall away. It doesn't. There's nothing that needs to happen for this to be what it is already. So in that sense, there is nothing on offer to that experience that you were talking about at the beginning that you're gonna miss something. To that experience, this message is incredibly frustrating. But when there's an, let's say an openness, when something is, is ready, you could say, then something else might be heard, something beyond or other than that need for something to happen. That's, that's good, yep. Thank you, Jim. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you. So again, our format for this one, if you want to start uh, typing Q&A uh, questions, you can type in the Q&A button here. Uh, Jim is going to be ready to answer any questions. Now I have the first question for you from right. NR. Until me drops away whenever, how should we live to avoid painful experiences in me dream? Yeah, well, you, there isn't a you. That knowing experience is simply an experience in what appears to be being solid, real, in relation to you. That's never true. It's a dream. The dream, part of that dream, is that you have free will and choice to avoid or not to avoid negative or painful experiences. There isn't anyone in there that makes a choice about whether to have or not have painful or negative experiences. There's this popular um, question that, that you know, keeps on coming back in this conference and people keep on asking about free will. Yeah. And all that, you know, it, it, it's, it's a repeated question over and over again. I guess people want to hear over and over again. <laughs> what that there the isn't free will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So can you, can, you, can you put your take on that one? <laughs> well, I mean, as, there's, never, there's never an experience of having no free will. But there is the revelation that only the individual, through its experience of knowing or feeling like it knows what's happening, feels like it has the choice to do one thing or another. And it's a dream. That experience falls away with the experience of knowing what's happening. And just to be clear, the end of the experience of knowing what's happening isn't then unknown. It's not a state of unknowing, a state of blankness. It's just an, un, an unfixedness that there's just what's happening without any rules, without any limit, without any need to be one way or another. That's super clear. Thank you, Jim. Here's another question here from Sir Martin Exton. Would you say that beloved, the beloved is everything? Yeah. <laughs> Next it's not question. really. I mean, what we're pointing to, just before we get too far into this, what we're pointing to is something that can't be known. So this, this, what's happening, what seems to be going on, can't be fixed as a knowing experience. That is always an imposition of an illusory separation. That's the only thing that seems to be known. When that illusory separation falls away, what's revealed in contrast to the experience that this appearance is conditional, that love is conditional, that freedom is conditional, 
is the reflection of that no thing or the unknowable that really everything is unconditional but the unknowable isn't unconditional it's unspeakable brilliant thank you ben asked hi what questions and truths can you give to constantly questioning my me and investigating the ideas around i am well the idea that questioning my me or the me is going to lead somewhere is just a part of the experience that what's happening is known and that there's something that needs to happen to bring about what's longed for that's just a part of the dream of the individual that this isn't what's longed for and that experience the experience of separation is a dream so the idea that it has to go away is just a part of that dream experience when it does stop which is possible that's not a real happening it doesn't really happen it, you could say it's an unhappening so it doesn't fit into the experience of the individual's need for something to happen it's the end of that need revealing nothing's happening awesome Anonymous attendee <laughs> asks, how do you explain the suffering that people experience if there's no real person? Why does that need to be explained? I don't know why it would, it, what's an explanation for anything? There's just suffering. If you cut off a finger, it's gonna hurt. Anonymous question, it is often said that nobody can do anything to experience non-duality, but it does seem that the world follows cause and effect. Teachers say that there's no path, although they had one. It is perplexing. <laughs> it makes the teachers sound dishonest. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, I have, I mean, it makes total sense to doubt what's being said here. There really isn't a whole lot of choice when it comes to that separate experience. It will either believe or doubt what's being said because what we're talking about isn't an experience. It doesn't fit the model of the experience of the individual that feels like knowing, which is the only currency it has, is going to be the solution to its experience that what's happening is dissatisfying. Spot on. <laughs> this is a new classic question from Anonymous that, that I've been seeing too. When you, when you say what's happening, what exactly do you mean? The unavoidable, what arises, what appears, what's happening, which is neither unreal nor real. The ungraspable, unknowable, including the experience of being an individual. It's whatever is happening that includes thoughts, feelings, objects, whatever. That's just simply what's happening. Another one from Anonymous. There's so many Anonymous here. Uh, <laughs> what advice can you give? As for self-investigation, I know that there's no me or practice, but in the world of ignorance and illusion, there's an investigation that has to happen. Why does investigation have to happen? That's just still part of the dream that, what, that there's a real individual that really needs to fall away for this to be what's longed for. There, there, is, no, there is no individual. That is an illusion. It's not really happening. The experience of separation is that there's some distance or real time that needs to be overcome to find what's longed for. That is a dream. What's happening, this appearance is already unconditionally free. Nothing needs to happen for that to go away. There can arise a dream that it's lost, but it's never found. Wow, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Anon says, when this is understood, yeah. I don't know what he's asking, but maybe he's asking, what do you mean by when this is understood? Hmm. Well, I don't know if I said understood. We're really not talking about understanding. Understanding can lead to a certain ease, a certain recognition, you know, if you understand the concepts that can in some ways be relaxing. But what we're really pointing to isn't an understanding that's rather superficial to what we're suggesting. This one, if there is no time, then when we have a dentist appointment at two o'clock, we seem to follow a thought in time that says it's 1.30 time to leave for the dentist. Yeah. So what one is true, time or no time? Both. 
time, time, just like everything else, maybe you didn't hear the beginning, but I, what the suggestion is, is that nothing is fixed. So is Emerson over there on the screen? Yes. Really? No. So is there time? Yes. Really? No. So is there a past to this appearance? Yes. Could we talk about it? Yes. Is it really past? No. It's simply this appearing as that. Thank you. Thank you. David, is the illusory self merely a construct consisting of our conditioning and belief system? No. No. What happens is, it, this is a story, right? It's not really true. There isn't anything really true. But the story goes that there's a contracted energy that arises in the body out of which an I am arises. So that contracted energy, the first thing it has is here, like I was talking about at the beginning of the meeting. And around that, then through, through experience, there's a belief system built up because just the initial here-ness doesn't actually make sense in the context of this. When I am arise, uh, what arises with it is an experience that the appearance has or needs meaning and purpose. And so my journey is to find and fulfill that. And to do that, I build up, not as a choice, but just through experience, um, my beliefs, my beliefs about what's right and wrong and good and bad. And those are built up through experience as my path to find what I feel is missing, as my path to fulfill what I think is the meaning and purpose of the appearance of my life. Now, just to clean all that up, there is no individual, there is no my life, and the appearance has no meaning or purpose. It is already unconditionally free. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. This is really good, yes. Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're just talking to me. You're used yeah. to kind of like people coming in. So I'll try to make kind of like very facial expressions. No, you're awesome. This is <laughs> And I'll try to change my accent, although I can't. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Can, em yeah. <laughs> Can empty fullness be described? No. It's not even empty fullness, just like it's not unconditional love or unrecognizable freedom. Really, this, what is, can't be described. It can't be known. It can't be owned. It has absolutely no fixed points to it. It is anything and everything. It's completely unhinged, <laughs> unbound. There's no way to put anything, to call it anything, empty fullness, is to put a label on it. So the difficulty is, is it's not any specific, contained by any specific word. And at the same time, it's absolutely every word. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Anonymous, if you stub your toe, how to say it is that it, it how to say that if you didn't stub your toe, it was your toe, not Sammy's. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. That's coming from the experience that there's really something inside the body. And as long as there's something inside the body, there will be the experience of ownership of what's happening. Nobody does that. It's not a choice. When the I am arises, the experience is that it arises inside the body. It doesn't actually. It arises within everything. So everything that's happening or not is mine. It either is happening to me or it's not happening to me. That's my story. And that's ownership. The individual, in that sense, is the owner of all experience. It happens to be a dream. As long as it's going, there'll be that experience of ownership. When there's no one left, it's obvious that they're just stubbing the toe. Damn. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> Anonymous goes, what advice can you give? To who? <laughs> About what? There's a good sushi bar in Asheville, North Carolina. Other than that, I'm not very good for advice. <laughs> do they serve sashimi? They do, of course. Okay. <laughs> Sake? No, but advice, I mean, I don't <laughs> want to be silly, but advice about how to find what is already. So advice means that something has to happen or there needs to be some movement for this to become. The individual is in a story of becoming. 
And the question presupposes that there truly is something that needs to happen, which is one of the basic movements of the contractions of the individual experience. Something needs to happen. And that generally is a better experience. That's its whole energy is for a better, more experience to add knowing to itself in the hope that at some point there'll be enough. So of course there's no suggestion, there's no advice, because there isn't anything that needs to happen. That's not saying that nothing happens. I mean, nothing is happening, but it says that there's no need for anything to arise or anything in particular to happen. There's nothing that could possibly bring about what is already. And what is already is unconditionally free, which is missed by the individual by knowing what, it know, what, it look, what it's looking for. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, Anonymous goes, when this is understood, do certain negative feelings still occur as frequently or less frequently? Hate, anger, or jealousy? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. More intense, less intense. Yeah. Next one. How do you realize? Just, just sorry, just to be clear. Go ahead. We're not talking about understanding. Understanding in, in, in this conversation is actually a very superficial. This isn't understanding. It's just another form of knowing. And we're really pointing to an unfixedness, which is neither knowing nor unknowing. So, but still understanding even the concepts can have a, an apparent effect on the experience of the individual. They're powerful. It's a powerful message. Jim, how did yeah. you realize your true being? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so the story of Jim is I fell in love with something that I couldn't understand and died. The end? Yeah, that was the end. <laughs> 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 I should turn out the commentary. People are asking questions. Sorry, sorry. I just can't help it. Can you <laughs> sorry, Jim. Sorry, Rita. Sorry, people. Can you speak on this as anarchy and the experience of consistency in the dream? This seems unreconcilable to the person who lives in a very consistent dream where there is a degree of predictability. Like you don't wake up as a different body every morning. Couldn't anarchy do something as interesting as this? Why is it so predictable and boring? It's, well, that's, that's the dream of the individual. That's, but predictability, you're just exchanging what I say is knowing. <clears throat> and that's the dream. And that is completely, he's, I mean, he's exactly, or she's exactly right. The knowing energy that, that uh, imbues at the entire appearance is what makes it feel dead. So the knowingness of the appearance is the need to find something else, is the need for something else to happen, because it's no longer the aliveness that it is already. It's no longer the anarchy that it is already. So you think you know what's happening. You don't. This is already anarchy. It's already unconditioned, unknowably so. There's no need for anything to happen for that to come about. Predictability is just anarchy appearing as predictability. But that assumes that there was a real last moment that led to this moment, which is going to lead to the next real moment. That's the dream. There aren't real, a real continuity. This is a, an immediate, singular, unrecognizable, unknowable happening. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Mm -hmm. um, Anonymous goes, awareness speakers talk about awareness being aware of itself. Do yeah. you recognize awareness? There isn't. A, well, in the dream, awareness is just a form of knowing. It's just another form of knowing. It's a contracted energy, awareness, consciousness, attention, I amness. Those are all contracted senses in the body that are just a form of knowing. And teachings are all knowing. Teaching, as I said, it's just... Is, is knowing just engenders the need to know and teaching is just an aspect of that. And our ask is falling away of me and arising in what is happening. W well, it's an unhappening. And it really, in the end, it's not worth mentioning and probably never would be mentioned if there wasn't 
a separate experience asking a question about itself, what it could find to make this more, because there's nothing to say about it right now. It's just a response. This is from Mark. Hi, Jim. So there is no self. I have known that for years. All there is is what is. There is no other reality. There is only this. It is not a thing. No thing and no one can get it or know it. All this is is understood, but still there is no deeper comprehension. I, mm. I understand it mentally. Yeah. 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 Anonymous attendee goes, I have tried for 10 years to experience I am. I understand you don't talk about that. Would you say that that is just a place in time? Yes. Now. Now. I am now. That's real. For that experience, that's what it is. And that's why you can say now, because it's, it's, it separates itself from the other apparent time where it's not, no, not self-aware. So, but the message here is, that is a dream. There isn't a now, because there isn't any real point in time to compare it to. Anonymous attendee asks, can you talk about inner and outer objective, objective and subjective? What is transcendental consciousness? I don't know what transcendental consciousness is. If he's talking about the I am, the detached I am that realizes God, then maybe that's what they're talking about. The, um, <clears throat> what we're talking about here is the, there's just what arises. And in that sense, there's no real inner and no real outer. We're talking about the end of what appears as real. A new classic question. So if there's nothing to do, why are we here talking? Who said there's nothing to do? <laughs> no, nobody. It's a misunderstanding. And I think, I think a lot of times there's a, there's a willing misunderstanding or, or a selective hearing. Because it's, it's never been said, as far as I know, that there's nothing to do. The suggestion is there's no one to do it and nothing needs to happen. But that's not suggesting that there's someone there that now can decide, I don't have to do anything. That's, not, that's just not the message. But if that's what happens, it's what happens. Nobody chooses anyway. Spot on, thank you. Travis goes, does the body-mind experience apparent separation or is it just a sense yes. of self? No, it's a, I don't know what the sense of self is, but body, mind, and experience is separation. An experience is always a subject-object relationship. And a subject-object relationship is an experience. And that can only happen if there's a real happening, if it's real. A real I am to experience or know it. Brilliant. Art, has anything deepened or changed for you over time with regard to this message or your experience of it? Well, it's not an experience, but yeah, definitely it's deepened. Uh, Anonymous asks, what books can you recommend? Tony Parsons' books. Um, have you got to real, how have you got to the real state? Are you doubtless? Doubtless. Yes. Yeah, there's no certainty. And there's no doubt. There's, there's just no real position. So there's just what's arising. And of course, I didn't get there. How could you get to what is already? What movement? So in that sense as well, you've got to say, this isn't an achievement, nor is this message coming out of an authority. If anybody knows anything, it's the questioner. This doesn't know. That's the whole point. The message isn't coming out of an acquired knowledge. It's coming out of the end of the need for this to be anything in particular. Anonymous goes, how do we talk? How do we walk the pathless path? You, well, that's, that's <laughs> well, you got it, man. <laughs> Read your question. <laughs> David goes, great answer, LOL. <laughs> um, Isa goes, hi, Jim. I enjoyed your contribution to the film Zero and One very much. Okay. And the way you clearly expressed the mystery of non-duality. 
my parents separate me is dying to take this chance to ask you a question. But as there's nothing to ask, I would just like to say to the apparent gym, hi, and thank you. Capital letters, L-O-L. Oh, thanks. Hi. <laughs> thank you. That's Isa. Hi, Isa. Thanks, Isa. Can you explain God alone is real, please, from Anonymous? God alone is real. Well, I mean, I could come up with some complicated answer, but there isn't anything called a God. If you think of God, God is a concept that the individual hopes for is real, as some sort of hope that something outside of its experience can help it. There isn't anything outside, and there isn't anything real. The whole message is that this appearance, and what I'm talking about when I say this appearance, I'm talking about sitting in front of a computer screen with thoughts and feelings and whatever else is going on isn't real. It has no real position. It's not fixed and it's not knowable or unknowable. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, Anonymous asks, I experience a lot of pain in the body with the squeezing. Is that just a story too? It feels horrible. I get relief when I watch you, but then it comes back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this go on for 20 more years. Yeah. This is what it seems like. It yeah. almost seems silly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not silly. I think that's an unnecessary judgment. Is the story of digestion as true or false as the story of reincarnation? Digestion? Digestion. Well, digestion is just simply something that seems to happen. It's a description of a bodily function. Reincarnation requires belief. Something completely different, it seems to me. Anonymous gas, if we already know what is, why do we not realize it? Well, you, you don't, you, if you know what is, then that's not what's being talked about. What's being talked about is what is, is neither knowable nor unknowable. It's just ungraspable. It's unfixedness. It's indescribable. It can't be put into words. And at the same time, it's every one of those words. And it's everything that's heard or understood. There's no separation. This is from David. Does unconditional freedom permit what is to include what isn't? Conditional freedom? Does unconditional freedom permit what is to include what isn't? Uh, well, I don't know. There's not two separate things. For here, unconditional freedom points to the paradox that the appearance is, appears to be this and it's not at the same time. It is and it isn't. That's not two separate things, is and isn't. So it doesn't function in the experiential, logical world of the individual that knows what's being said. It is and isn't simultaneously, unknowably, paradoxically. And that is all there is, is what is and isn't. And it doesn't allow anything, nor does it reject anything. It is all that appears. Awesome, Jim. The next one is, you make it impossible to ask a question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, what happens is that the individual's need for something else runs into the recognition that there's nothing to get, that the situation is hopeless. This one is from Anonymous. With the recent increased awareness in non-duality via the internet, what do you think non-duality will become when do you think non-duality will become mainstream? Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, seems pretty mainstream now. I mean, it always, it'll never be widely accepted, really. I mean, if you think about it, there is nothing you can, it is pre completely, it has no practicality whatsoever. So if somebody comes to it who's looking for something else, then they'll, they'll quickly move through. And if someone else is there, and of course, this is all choiceless, where there's an openness, a readiness to hear something beyond the individual's need for something else, then that'll be the end of it. But that'll never be a huge number of people. Jim, do you think there's a continuance after death, that there will be a reuniting of loved ones, or that 
is that just a dream? Yeah, yeah. There isn't anybody alive. Death, death, if I can explain, is actually just real time. It's only the experience that what's happening is real, that there was a real person that was really born, that's really living and is really going to die, that has the experience that death is going to be meaningful. The death of the body is, has no more meaning than this happening. Nothing has any meaning in that sense. It's just a dream. I am is a dream. If death were real, there would need to be somebody that knew they were dead or somebody that didn't know they were dead. Either way, it becomes irrelevant as a concept. It only lives in the dream world of the individual as a reality. And what really death is, the horrible point of death, is the individual thinks or has the experience it is what it knows or it is what it perceives. And that's going to change. That's going to end. That's the threat. Thank you. Jim, what about family, friends, and children? Are they noting, Are they nothing too? Are family and friends not considered unique? Well, in, in that sense, I mean, every, every appearance is unique. So Emerson has, is unique. The computer screen is unique. It's all unique. Every individual has a certain energy about them, a certain quality about them. Some people you feel drawn to and some less drawn to. So there's a uniqueness. The message isn't about that just because that everything that arises is emptiness appearing. The message is, is that because it's emptiness appearing, it's not real or solid. There's nothing fixed about it. And that can't be, it just can't be described what that means. Anonymous goes, would you say you exist? No, nothing <laughs> exists. Uh, Pol Polina asks, uh, what is the main thing that makes here and now is real enlightenment experience, not just an escape from worries? Yeah, I think you're at the wrong seminar. <laughs> 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 you're supposed to be on the something stage. This isn't about, this isn't, there is no real here and now. That's just a part of the dream of the individual. Ishwara. <laughs> Hi, Jim. This feeling Hi. of life just happening is so wonderfully will, wild, wild and free. Yeah. Purple heart, smiley face. Yeah. Uh, why is the illusion here? There's no reason for anything, and it's not. It's an illusion. It's not real. For it to have a reason, it would need to be real. For anything to have a reason, it would need to be real. There isn't any reason for anything. As the man said before, this is anarchy already. Lisa goes, something keeps noticing that I am narrating what is happening shortly after it. It's mm -hmm. happened and then laughing out loud. Is, is this still the self or is this part of the falling away of self and realization? There is no self. There is no realization. It's just what's happening. There is only what's happening. Waiting for the me to fall away is that experience of knowing, waiting for there to be another experience. It's just a little circle of looking for something to happen. What is longed for is what is already. And that can't be found because it can't be lost. There can only be the illusory experience that it's not this. Anonymous writes, as you are speaking, I'm not even listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that must be level seven of 10 or eight. Well nope. done. Level 9.5. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> as, as you, I'm going to continue. As you are speaking, I'm not even listening, but it feels like I'm not here at all. It's sublime. It's frustrating because as soon as you are not on the screen, it seems to go away. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what's happening. <clears throat> Does every body mind know this message underneath the layers of me? It doesn't well, nobody, seem so. Nobody, nobody knows it. But it seems to me that in some way, it is already obvious. It's never known, but it seems to me absolutely that in the, it's not quite the right word, but everybody knows this. Absolutely. It's so obvious when, the, when that contracted energy is that when there's a, a readiness or a willingness or an openness to this, it, the, the message just goes in like butter. It's so obvious that there only is what's appearing and that it is not dependent 
on anything that is or isn't going to happen and that there is no need for it to be the way it is and there's no need for anything to happen and it is not necessary to know what this is. Boom. (laughs) Do you meditate from anonymous? Uh, Well, meditate. I don't know if that's the right word. Really, I guess the end of the individual is meditation. Art asks, can you describe how, in, in what way this message has deepened? Um, well, some time ago, there, there was recognized there was an energy of wanting to be happy, which was just a contracted part of it, and that fell away. Is this awakening completely and entirely random? Full stop. Full stop. Well, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen. So it can't be random. It's, the individual is convinced that something needs to happen for this to be. And it's the other way around. There's something that can stop happening, which reveals that it is already. This isn't an acquisition. The individual can't help but live in the world of process, progress, and acquisition. Getting and getting and getting. It's not a judgment. That's just when knowing arises, when I am arises, what arises with it is the need to know. Knowing isn't the end of the need to know. Knowing is the beginning of the need to know. Knowing is the beginning of the need for the next moment, the need for something else, the need for security, the need to find. Miranda asks, is it better to have positive thoughts over negative thoughts? Yeah, probably. I mean, better or worse is relative, but if it were my life, yeah, that sounds better. Not that anybody has a choice. If the law of attraction is real, (laughs) if If the law of attraction is real, would it make sense to focus on positive thinking? Well, no, there's nobody in there to make the choice, but, uh, you know, a positive experience is better than a, be- a not so positive experience, but that's not really what the conversation is about. But yeah, positive feelings are, are more comfortable than negative feelings. Jim, if there's an awakening glimpse dropping away, then how, then, then how, why could the apparent self ever return even apparently? Yeah, that's just what seems to happen. I mean, what seems to be reported to me a lot is there's, I know a lot of people think they want to find no me. And it seems that the first instance where there's a recognition where that, where that contracted energy falls away is actually quite terrifying. And the last thing they want is for that to continue. Of course, that's not the end of me. Of course, there's some me there still going, oh shit, what's this? I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but, and then it, and then it, it closes in on itself and thinks it knows what happened. That shit's good. Um, <laughs> what happens when body dies? Nothing. Body dies. It's just this. What the question implies that this is not death, that life and death are separate, that there's something really happening, and that is just a dream. There's already nothing happening. This is from Travis. Hi, Jim. Are you saying that the conditioned body is apparently here doing what it does, but the illusory sense of I am that takes owners of all experience is totally unreal? Yes. Hi. Okay. That's the same one. Sorry. <laughs> Anonymous goes, would you describe the experience as blissful, oneness, or entirely ordinary? Um, ordinary. Multiple choice question. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) We can do the rest of it multiple choice. (laughs) What happens to the experience at death? Well, there is no experience. The point is, is that if there's an experiencer, when it gets to the point of the death of the body, At some point, there'll be the recognition that there never was any need for hope, that there never was anything really that was able to be held on to, that the only thing that they thought they were going to lose was the imaginary real time that they thought that was happening. That's 
That's what happens if there's still the illusory experience of an individual when the body dies. If that's not happening, then there's just that there's just simply what's happening. This is death already. There isn't anyone in it. There is no need for it to be here. Thank you. Mark Aska, I tell the story about a very easy, blissful death that happened 50 years ago, which became a heaven and hell flip when doubt crossed the mind. Running from the resulting extreme terror went on for days. This sequence has repeated numerous times over the years as of being sideswiped by doubt. The takeaway lesson has been to respect doubt and respect the ability to remain. But now and again, I wonder, is this that remains any more substantial than this which comes and goes, and so what? Nothing is substantial. Next one. From Mary, what is long is what is already. Can you say more? Nobody wants what is already. Nobody wants what is already. Well, it's unwantable. Nobody. No, yeah. and then the body. Yeah, wants <laughs> what is already. It, it's unwantable. How could, how could it be wanted? How could what is already be wanted? That assumes there's a separation from it. It can't be believed in, and it, it can't be wanted. The individual is the experience that it's real. And the experience that what's happening is real or separation, the experience of separation, is dissatisfying because it becomes dead and known. But the individual doesn't want, the end of the individual is the end of the individual. Mm. It's its worst nightmare, its worst fear. So it doesn't want this. You have to turn off your, you have to turn on your mic. This one. <laughs> I'd like to ask a question, but it's as if you're a machine gun and it's useless. <laughs> yeah, it is useless. But I mean, the, as I said this before, it's useless because there's nowhere to go. <clears throat> this, this, this happening, looking at the computer screen, listening to these words, isn't going anywhere. It doesn't have any intention. It's not missing anything. It's not waiting for something to become it is already what is and isn't. So there's no need for a question. Doesn't mean that it shouldn't be asked. It's fine to ask questions and to be shot down, why not? But the experience is that there's nothing, none of the questions actually work, because they don't. They're all, all questions or most questions are about getting somewhere, about moving from here to there, because this is not satisfactory. This is somehow discontent and the discontent is the need to move and the experience of real movement. So there's no way out for that discontent. There's no answer for that. Isa asks, would you say that this so-called deepening keeps going infinitely? Doesn't seem to, no. It seems to, at some point, it seems to be over. Thank you. Um, David asks, are we living in a simulation? I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know what you mean by simulation. If you mean that I don't know. Do I mean all is just simply autonomous? Absolutely. Just chaos, just happening? Yes. But no, but there's no we living in a simulation. There's no one in it, aware of it. It's just happening. How do we talk about something that never happened from Alexandra? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, what are I, you going to say? <laughs> it just seems to happen. There seems to be a dream experience of knowing. And it, and, it, and it has certain qualities. And when it falls away, part of that is the recognition that never happened. Nothing was ever real. There is the dream. For the dreamer, it's real. For the dreamer, the experience is, this is really happening to me. And the, the, the illusory part is that that has an effect or a reality on the appearance. It doesn't. So that's how it can be said, it never happened, because the experience, realness of the appearance is never true. But the experience of seeking and all the things that come out of the experience of being an individual, they seem to apparently happen. Jim, can you speak about desire? So many teachers say that the me is actually attachment or desire. Yeah. I mean, if I, if I see a pretty flower, there is a desire to smell it. Why not? Or it's there. Cool. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I mean, for me, what that, that relates a little bit to the Buddhism desirelessness mm. and 
it seems to me that what's being pointed to there is the desire is what, what we're talking about here is a need. It's a need to know. And that need to know for me is that endless desire, which creates mm -hmm. suffering I'm seeking, which is for me, from this point of view, the suffering that's being suggested. So when that, when that stops happening, when seeking is no longer necessary because there's no one that knows what this is and therefore needs another moment to be real in, what arises is just simply what's happening. There's no need for it to be something else. And so in that sense, there's the end of that suffering of seeking, but there's not the end of emotions and things happening and life happening. Jim Gias asks, hi, I'm afraid that if when the need to know falls away, indifference will drop in. Can you comment? Well, you think you, you have free will and choice and that you're doing something now. And that if, if you're not there, then you won't be able to control things anymore. And I've got news for you. You're not controlling anything. At best, you're a reaction to a reaction to a reaction to a reaction, having the experience of being in control. It's a dream. Jim is cracking me up. Hilarious, Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, to be or not to be? Yeah, that is the if anybody had a choice. <laughs> um, next one. The awakening wasn't terrifying. It was sublime and all that is. Still mm. don't get how there would be a re reappearance of a parent self. Mm. Does Rita enjoy <laughs> this Jim better than the seeker Jim? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Does Rita enjoy this gym better than the seeker gym? <laughs> she doesn't know. <laughs> oh, so bam. <laughs> uh, now she's, she's, she revisited and now she thinks yes. <laughs> Best question ever. <laughs> Art goes, Art questions, how have you dealt with tragedy or loss? Well, the individual is threatened by emotions, threatened by everything that's happening, threatened by strong happenings. And when there's no one left who feels like they're in control or need to control the appearance, then that's just, it's just simply what's happening. So there's sadness or there's loss or there's extreme happenings. Daniil asks, what is this contracted energy? How do we know about any energy? What is it? Are bodies like batteries? Those are dead when charge is over? Maybe. That's what, the, that's what the Chinese doctors say, that you have a certain amount of qi. But the contracted energy isn't life. The contracted energy, I mean, we could tell a story about how that happens. You could say it's the brain, but it doesn't really matter what the cause is. But it's a, it's a contracted energy around which the experience of I am seems to rest out of the first thing that seems to be known, which is here, which is the beginning of the dream. There isn't a here, not a real one. Anonymous asks, some describe an experience of nothingness initially and subsequently an experience of everythingness. Is this a common sequence? I don't have any idea. I don't know. I don't, there was no experience of nothing or an experience of everything. Jim, do you ever get bored? Does, it's a boredom. And funny how often that question comes up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is about being bored. But boredom, for me, it seems, to, it seems to be a layering of moments of nothing seeming to happen to me. And that doesn't, that doesn't in that sense, happen anymore. There's always, it just doesn't seem to happen now. Norman asks, are you sure that this what is is the same what is that the sages thousands of years ago experienced as what is? No. Can't call them up. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> no, really, I don't know what the question's about. I think what people, people want to have some sort of certainty. You know, they want to be able to trust what's being said because what's being said completely undermines everything that seems to be known about the experience of being an individual. There is no way to have a real relationship with the message. 
The message is the absolute, the destru destroyer of all relationships. And that's very insecure. There's just no way. And so I think people want to have some sort of security or certainty that what's being said here is true. There isn't any. There isn't any. Even if you believe it, what you'll be doing is you'll be saying, oh, he means this. Oh, he means that. He'll, you'll have to put it into some, it happened to me, it's what I did. Because it's, you know, certain things had fallen away and Tony would still say things that were completely unbelievable. And I would go, oh, well, he must mean this. You'll always be putting it in the same sort of context, making sense out of it for, for yourself. That's just part of the experience, the dream experience. Is this benign according to anonymous question? Benign? Benign, yeah. What does benign mean? Harmless? I'm not sure actually. <laughs> Huh. Should I well, ask it's Alexa? It's, it's, it's meaningless. I don't know what, what it means by benign, but it, it's completely meaningless. It's valueless. I was about to ask Alexa there, um, but <laughs> <laughs> Jim, what is there? There is no there. Jim, please explain all this one. <clears throat> a dream of the individual that it will find what it's looking for. The individual thinks that oneness is going to be, it experiences a separation and it feels like, because it can't imagine that what's being said here has any reality to it at all, that there's no one. That's somebody doing exactly what I said. So they're imagining they understand what's being said and they think they'll be able to bridge the apparent separation as an experience and then know themselves as one with all other things. That's not the way, that's not what's being suggested. It's not that you will find oneness. It's that there is no separation already. Separation is an illusory experience of what, what appears is knowable and real. This is fire, Jim, I'm hot now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> We're going for the shirt next. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. <laughs> All, oh, only over 18. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, uh, Travis asks, hi again, Jim. He -he. Are you saying that body is unaware of the illusory experience of an individual? I didn't. Uh, body? Oh, sorry. Are you saying that the body is unaware the illusory experience of an individual. Is the body unaware of the illusory experience of the individual? The body is just a body. There isn't any awareness in it. I mean, there's a functional awareness, if you want to call, if you want to say that there's a brain, which is a story because nobody sees their own brain. But you could say that there's a brain in the body and that there's a functional awareness, but that's not an awareness that anyone has. Lisa goes, when you say it seems to me who is that you're talking about if Just, the me isn't uh, there. Colloquial, colloquialism. <laughs> I'm not gonna start talking in Advaita language. Mark goes, laughing here as well, a comedy of errors. Hmm. Anonymous attendee, who am I? A dream. And Kiji goes, is intuition only in a state of ego illusion relevant? No, no. It's just something that arises and it, it gets, it gets um, what do you say, that, <clears throat> that it belongs to the individual experience and it's somehow narrowed by the individual separate experience. And when that falls away, when that's no longer happening, that contraction, then, uh, then um, intuition seems to blossom. Thank you. Uh, Claudio goes, great that you're not chit-chatting, but simply go to the core, <laughs> period. I cannot follow. Seems fine. Ha ha. <laughs> Anonymous goes, when you say nothing is real or nothing is happening, is that because it's the illusory me really feeling real? That makes life well, that's real. Not because, it's not because of the illusory me. It's just a, it's just a pointing to unknow unknowability that there is no solidity, no realness to the appearance. There's nothing behind it. It's not really coming from anywhere, going anywhere. Those are just words that are trying to describe it. That's not an effect of me. Ben asks, so there is only being. Can you please expand on this? 
There isn't being. Susan asks, you are what is? Nobody is what is. There is only what is. There's, not, there's no position to what is. There's no you to be what is. Anonymous goes, what you're saying is nonsensical. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Monica, hi. Love when you speak, shortly and simply. Hmm. Thanks. Anonymous, attendee, if the apparent self drops away and all is obviously as it is, then how or why can the apparent self reappear apparently? Well, it didn't all drop away. It's only when it all goes <laughs> that it can't come back. And an awakening or a glimpse or a meaning in being, there, isn't, there is still obviously some residue of the individual, a, a residue of contraction. David asks, in the absence of linear time, what does this appear like a movie, one frame at a time? Speakers talk about how this appears and simultaneously dissolves, or perhaps this is continuous. Well, it's not saying that there isn't any time. I'm not saying that there isn't any. The only thing that there isn't is me, is the knowing experience that what's happening is real. That's all that isn't. Everything else is neither real nor unreal. It's apparent. It's indescribable. So there appears to be a past. Is there a real past? No. It's this appearing as a past. There seems to be what might happen in the future. Is there a real future? No. It's this appearing as what might happen in the future. There's a discussion going on with Emerson and me and a couple of other people. Is that really happening? No. But it appears to be happening. It's not real. It can't be held on to. It can't be known in that sense as a solid entity that I could add to myself, which is what the individual tries to do with everything that's happening. It's freedom. It's just unboundedness appearing as a conversation. Norman asks, does eternity move? Does eternity move? I don't know what you mean by eternity. Infinite, yes and no. Of course it does. That's infinite. <laughs> and it's apparently moving. Is it really moving? No. <laughs> ben asks, oh, Ren, is there no animal kingdom? Uh, you're going to have to get a little, a little more clarity on that. There's, <clears throat> there's a parent animal. I don't know what that means. There seems to be a lot of animals on the planet, if that's what we're talking about. <laughs> uh <laughs> there's a mosquito in my room. That's an animal. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Hi. So there's no meaning to any happenings, all just yeah. life. Life. Yeah. Lifing alone. Reasonless. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Diana asks, it's recognized that there is no one here, yet wrestling and struggling go, to go beyond, to drop, it's happening. How does an illusory one wrestle a mirage? It's a conundrum. No, it's not. It's a dream. You've misunderstood. The only one that would be wrestling with anything is the knower. Otherwise, there's simply what's happening. So if you're, wrestling, you're wrestling with the experience of yourself and you're trying to find something else, a better experience. Bernie asks, I understand that there's no free will, but for liberated. Jim, Jim, do no, there's no free will for anyone. <laughs> there's no free will. There isn't anyone. Okay, sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Jim, <laughs> Jim, do thoughts still guide the actions of the body? Example, oh, these armpits smell. Better have a shower. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that seems to happen. That does seem to happen, but that's not a thought. Jared asks, smelling, smelling your armpits isn't a thought. It's just something that seems to happen. And there's the recognition that smellingness is happening. And then there's the bathing or, or not. I feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> You've been busy. I've been busy. <laughs> Jared goes, if we are a dream, who is doing the dreaming? The dream and the dreamer are the same thing. And that's, that's actually quite an quite a interesting point because it also makes clear that no one wakes up. The individual is constantly, like somebody asked before about, will we all become one or how do I find oneness? That's part of the dream that the individual is real. 
and is going to wake up at some point in the future. There is no individual. The dream and the dreamer are the same. So when the dreamer ends, the dream ends and nobody wakes up. Uh, Ian McNichol. Hi, Ian. Do you know Ian? I do. Hey, Ian. Hey, Ian. Did Tony give you that rug? (laughs) (laughs) Hide the rug. (laughs) That's worth a lot. (laughs) <laughs> the carpet. I know. <laughs> it's I know. worth really. a lot. I'm it's so on get, eBay, everybody. It's on eBay. I'm, I'm supposed to get ten percent of that. <laughs> Give it back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anonymous goes. Why does this Sargadada talk about being knowing and loving? I guess that's what he realized. Okay. Can you say something about deep sleep? I, I've heard other people say that there's no me in deep sleep. I know nothing about it. At this point, could you create a self or recontract the energy temporarily if you wanted to? But there, there never was one. How are you going to recreate something that never happened? What about all the people who find happiness in the dream? If, it, if it's a dream, why are they happy? Well, happiness in the dream is always temporary. It never lasts. That's the problem for the individual, is the individual is looking for a lasting happiness. And people, actually, there are teachers out there Promising lasting happiness. Just think of it. Just think (laughs) shortly. If you were always happy, how would you know? It's the up and down of it that makes it wantable. It's the contrast of it. And the the problem for the individual is no matter how much it attains and how much it gets, because everything is still an experience of being real, meaning separate, and in a sense, dead, There'll be always the longing for something else. Mm-hmm. And something else is exactly where the individual, where death is for the individual. Something else. It's always looking for something else. And it never, you, there isn't anything else. So it's a hopeless endeavor to find something else. So it's a hopeless endeavor to try to be happy. Jim, what's your spirit animal? My spirit animal. It probably changes. But today I would go with a black panther. Awesome. Awesome. This is the last question. Uh, Jim, did you know that you just answered 100 questions and you win the, the Guinness World Record of I'll awesome. send you the certificate? It did feel very, uh, what is it, quick fire. Sort yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Why does Jim talk about this? And this is actually my next question because yeah. there are probably like a thousand people that are not watching live that's going to be seeing this and they'll probably want this. Could you do a weekly Zoom talk? I love it. This is from Art. Art won the 100 question. All right. <laughs> does, he get a, does he get a prize? Uh, we, we give certificates of nothing. All ah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <Gold. done. laughs> well, thank you so much, Jim. Um, we, ran, uh, we went over time. I Again. wish you could do more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Great. It's all right. No, no, no. It's, it's, I wanted to go to 100 questions. That was my goal. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, somebody got something out of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so good much to see you again, good to see you too um yeah give me the commission from that rug 10 percent yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> bye man Take thank care. you so much the end of it thank you we'll contact you after bye rita thank you so much for everything release that book yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, Rita. Thank you very much. Please message Jim to release his book soon so that um, (laughs) everybody, his email is, I'm joking. (laughs) Uh, Thank you so much, everyone.